The purpose of this video is to remind you of some of the basic properties of functions using bubble and arrow diagrams. So what's a bubble and arrow diagram? Well, before we get to that, we need to remember the definition of what. So what is a function? Well, the definition says that a function is a relationship between two sets where each item in the first set corresponds to exactly one item in the second set. That's pretty dense. Let's see if we can try to understand what that means using an example. Okay, so for a function to be defined, we need to have two sets. So in this example, our first set is going to be the set of states in the United States. And then our second set is going to be the set of positive whole numbers. Now, we need more than just that. We need more than just two sets. We need to now have a relationship between those two sets. And we could set up a lot of relationships here, but in this example, our relationship is going to be that each state corresponds to the number of representatives that state has in the United States House of Representatives. So the number of representatives in the United States House. Now we're going to represent this relationship by drawing our bubble and arrow diagrams. So we're going to have one bubble on the left that's going to represent our states, and one bubble on the right that's going to represent our positive whole numbers. And we can fill in all the 50 states on the left, but uh, let's just start with one particular state. Let's start with Pennsylvania. Turns out that Pennsylvania has 18 representatives in the United States House. So we've got Pennsylvania on the left. Pennsylvania is one of our states. 18 is one of our positive whole numbers. And because those two uh, quantities are related by our relationship, what we're going to do is we're going to draw an arrow between those two items. So the number of representatives that Pennsylvania has is 18. Let's do a couple other states. How about Alaska, which we abbreviate AK. So Alaska has one representative in the United States House, so we draw an arrow from Alaska to one. It turns out that North Dakota, ND, also only has one representative in the United States House, so we also draw an arrow from North Dakota to the number one. Now we might be concerned at this point, because our definition of function said that everything in the first set, everything in this first bubble, had to correspond to exactly one thing in the second bubble. So is it a problem that we've got Alaska pointing to one and also North Dakota pointing to one? Because what that rule for a function means is that for everything in this first bubble, we want to make sure that everything in this first set has exactly one arrow coming out of it. And the fact that these two arrows happen to point to the same place, that's okay. The answer corresponding to Alaska just happens to be the same as the answer corresponding to North Dakota. This is still going to be a function. In fact, we're also going to have numbers in the right-hand set, like for example 137. There's no state in the United States that has 137 representatives. So that means that this number in the right-hand bubble, 137, is not going to have any arrows pointing to it. And that's also okay. So the, the key thing to make a function work is that everything in this first set, and we could fill in all 50 states and we would see that this would work out, everything in this first set has to have exactly one arrow coming out of it. That's what makes it a function. So let's see an example of something that isn't a function. Once we are try to find something that even has a chance of being a function, we've got to talk about two sets. So in this example, our first set is going to be the set of people in the world. And then our second set is going to be the set of seven digit numbers. And our relationship, so how do we relate a person to a seven digit number? The relationship is that a person is connected to his or her phone number. It 
So one thing we're going to try to understand this relationship, we're going to draw two bubbles. So this bubble is going to represent people. And this second bubble is going to represent our seven digit numbers. And so let's just say for example, our friend Alice, her home phone number just happens to be 555-1234. And that's Alice's phone number, so we draw an arrow from Alice to that phone number. And maybe Alice has a sister named Beth, and Beth lives in the same house as Alice, and so Beth has the same phone number. And again, remember we talked in the previous slide that this is okay. It's okay to have two people with the same phone number. But what about their friend Clara? So Clara lives in a different house, so Clara's home phone number might be 555-2222. So that's Clara's phone number. But maybe Clara also has a cell phone. And maybe Clara's cell phone number is 555-8764. So that's also Clara's phone number. She has a home phone and she has a cell phone, like many people do. So that means that this isn't a function. So this is a problem. Clara, which is something in the first set, corresponds to two things in the second set. And that means that this isn't a function. It's a perfectly fine relationship. We can talk about people who have multiple phone numbers, but it's just not a function. And functions are special, and not every relationship is a function. In fact, there's another problem with this non-function. Maybe there's another person in the world named Dave, and Dave simply doesn't have a phone, doesn't have a cell phone, doesn't have a home phone, in which case there is no arrow coming out of this point in the first set. That's another reason why this relationship is not a function. So remember, the key idea is that for, this, for a relationship between two sets to be a function, everything in the first set has to have one and only one arrow coming out of it. So Clara causes a problem, and Dave also causes a problem. Again, it's a perfectly fine relationship, but it's just not a function. Functions are special.